Wilson here with a card that's going to give you a little bit different treatment for your background today. We're going to kind of show how to um, kind of antique this and it works great for both male and female cards too which is an added plus. The um, products we'll be using today include the shaded peony stamp. I'm going to be using just the inside uh, cutting edge for the Montreal die as well as the Toronto die. I'm going to be using the butterfly from the delicate garden frame. The string flower will give us a little embellishment. And the heraldic square we're going to use as an aperture. And the bed of roses embossing folder. So there's lots going on with this card. So I'm going to start with the background, now I have a piece of vintage gold card and I've already done a bit of stamping with the shaded peony but I'm gonna fill in this little area here. So we're gonna bring over our clear perfect medium and ink our shaded peony. And this is a sticky embossing ink. And then we just wanna take a little bit of a wipe with an anti-static pad there, okay? And stamp this a few times. And I'm kind of leaving a little bit of a, a diamond shape there for my heraldic square to cut. I'm just going to stamp a few more. Let's do right about like that. And then one in the corner. You kind of want to get them close to each other without overlapping if possible. There we go. And let's bring over a piece of copy paper to put underneath us. I'm going to be using some gold detail powder. This is Cosmic Shimmer Embossing Powder. Oop, missed a little corner right there. Okay. Just tidy that back into our container. Okay. And we will emboss those. So now I've got an open area there for my heraldic frame and we're going to use the outside of this cutting die. Just pop this in and don't, don't worry if you go into the frame at all, it's not a problem. We're just going to kind of center that right in the middle of that piece and tape it into place. And let's bring in our cutting plates here and I'm going to just pop that a little bit like that and run this through the middle of our grand caliber. Let's check it. Looks like we've cut nicely. Gently remove that. So this is the piece I want for my card. In fact, I'll fuss around with that later. So just using this aperture, we are going to bring in our embossing folder and we're going to emboss this. Now this is kind of a personal preference whether you want the positive or the negative side it doesn't really matter you get a different look with either so I think I'll just pop it in and see what we get. Um, the base plate and the raspberry adapter is the sandwich for this. Open that up. There we go. Just get a hold of this. And because you've got those little thin edges, be very gentle when removing that. There we go. Okay. Now it looks really good like that too. You could just leave that like that if you like. You have more of the flowers coming through. But if you want to bring them out a tiny bit more, use some uh, black soot distress ink. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a um, ink direct to the paper here with it and rub over this and that will bring up some of that design so you'll probably see less of your stamp flowers and more of a, just an antique sort of look to it. There we go. 
Be gentle. Remember, you have those very thin edges there, so you don't want to put too much pressure to rip through. But you want to make sure your ink gets on there. There we go, like that. Okay, so you can see how that gives it a really beautiful antique look to your background. I just love the way that looks. Okay, now I'm going to set this one aside because I do have one I've made earlier. And apologize, but let me just do a quick little cleanup on my mat since I do have some black soot that transferred. There we go. Now the other thing I want to do is go back to my embossing folder and just do a background of coconut white. And I have a little bit of transfer of some bits here that I'm going to pop out. There we go. Same sandwich for the Grand Caliber is the base plate and raspberry adapter. Now, if you're using a different die cutting machine, you can go to the Creative Expressions website and they list the sandwiches for all the different machines. Okay. There we go. So now I have an embossed background that I can put my other embossed background over. So you have a little bit of a uh, the same look going on, but obviously it's a little bit um, softer with just the white. So I'm going to peel off my mounting foam back here, and I have put it so that it does hold up some of these little bits too. So just take me a few seconds to get all of this off, and we'll get it seated onto the, uh, the white there. There we go. I think that'll probably work. Let's seat that. Try to get that nice and straight. There we go, like that. Tidy up just a bit. Okay, so I'll bring in my base that I've already created. Now I've used the black and the gold here just to tie it all in. Gives it a nice balance. I'm gonna use some Cosmic Shimmer glue on the back of this. Seat that right into the center. There we go, a little fuzzy. Okay, now the next thing I've done is I've gone ahead and cut the center of the heraldic frame in white and then backed it with gold because you have a separate cutting edge there so it's easy to do. I'm going to sit, seat that in a diamond orientation right in the middle there. And I've also stamped my sentiment and I've cut the sentiment out with the center of the uh, Montreal and the backing with the Toronto. And they're just slightly different in size, so you get a really pretty mat with that. I'll show you right here. There we go. That works perfectly. Now, building up a little bit of a floral element here. I've uh, tied a messy bow with some uh, white seam binding and added a little bit of a jute bow on top of that. So I'll put that onto the card with some uh, glue dots. I think I'll put that down in this corner here. There we go. And I've cut the string flowers out of vellum, which gives them a really lovely look. Now, if you, um, if you see that these little pieces, all the flowers have either two, three, or four little tiny little strings, so you can bring those up, give them a little shape and forming, and get this to look really lacy and filigree. Really like how this looks. And just using a little pokey tool to kind of bring them up, add some dimension. Really nice and easy to do. There we go. So I'll pop that right in the center. Hides that knot really nicely. There we go. Pop that around. Just do a little play with that and it gives them some beautiful dimension with that. And I've cut some butterflies, but I think I need one more. So we will just do a single extra butterfly out of vellum. Bring back my cutting plates. So there's my vellum, and I'm just going to use a tiny piece of wax paper under that butterfly because it's very detailed. And anytime you have wax paper, things tend to slide a little bit, so you want to tape from your wax paper off onto your plate to hold it securely. And we'll just cut one more. Oh, it's left it right there for me. Let's 
separate the wax paper from the vellum. And we'll just knock out these little bits here. There we go. Gives a real nice, sort of a um, really light feel to the card. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue these, actually that'll work, glue these into place. A Little bit of Cosmic Shimmer glue. I'm gonna pop one down here, give that a second to adhere. And I've got two more I've already cut. We'll put those up in this corner here. And this one. And I've got some pearls on that, and I just need to add a few pearls to the center here, and that will actually hide some of that glue. The Cosmic Shimmer glue is lovely to use with vellum, but I just think it's so pretty to have a few extra pearls in the center of butterflies. So let me just pop those into place. These are our three millimeter white, ooh, white pearls. Hate to have them pop off your cards that right into place. Straighten those up a little bit. Give the wings of the butterfly a little bit of movement because we don't want to glue those down. There we go. Look at that, just gorgeous. You can actually tie some knots in the end of your jute, spruce it up, but I just love the way that comes out. And you know, I think that would work absolutely beautifully without your flower for a gentleman's card too. And we know how hard they can be, don't we? I hope you've enjoyed today's video and look for us again soon.